Okay, problem two says the demand function for an item is d of p equals 94 minus 2p, and its cost function is c of p equals 650 plus 9p. Now notice this time, uh, what's in this parentheses is p, and so remember the first thing we have to do is establish what our independent variable is, because it needs to stay independent throughout the series of functions that we're going to write. So this time p is independent. And we want to write a revenue function, so we're going to have an R of P function this time. If I know the price, then I'll know the revenue. And we still know that revenue is generated by price times the quantity, but understanding function notation, we know that this Q can't be here. So we have to go to this demand function. D of P, remember, is the quantity equals 94 minus 2p, so this is q, and I can take this and replace um, q. So we'll have p times the quantity is equal to 94 minus 2p. So we're going to take the demand equation and substitute in for q this time, because p has to stick around. If we distribute and write, again, write it in descending order, we'll get negative 2p squared plus 94p. So that's our revenue function. And so now we need a profit function. And again, profit, when we know the price, P of P, the independent variable needs to be P, is revenue minus cost. And everything needs to be in terms of P. So I have an R of P function I can use. Minus and then parentheses, the cost function is also C of P, so that's 650 plus 9P. We don't have a negative distribute to distribute here, so that's why I didn't use parentheses, but here I have a negative to distribute, so I need those parentheses to make sure that negative goes to both terms. And then adding like terms, I have negative 2P squared 94p minus 9p is positive 85p minus 650. And again, this is a parabola that opens down with a y-intercept that's negative. It's going to go through the x-axis twice. This is the location of your break-even points. If we wanted to solve it algebraically, finding the break-even means setting the profit function equal to zero. And so that's a quadratic that you could solve using the quadratic formula. Now we're going to use Excel, but remember goal seeking gives you some rounding error sometimes. So if you wanted to check the exact answer, you could use the quadratic formula and get the exact um, break-even values. Okay, problem two is like problem one, except for this time my price is independent. So definitely want to think about that. And so price is going to be here. And I want to show you, I'm going to put just what I need this time. Problem one, I had some extra columns to talk to you about uh, what Excel can do. Um, but I am just going to cut to the chase here. I am going to put my demand queue in here because there could be questions where um, I want some information about the quantity. And so I'm going to put that in there, but I'm going to not put revenue in and I'm not going to put cost in. This time I'm just going to put my profit function in. So my demand Q is 94 minus 2 times P and my profit function is negative 2 times P squared plus 85 times P minus 650. And the domain I'm going to count by ones this time and I'm going to keep looking at my profit function to see where items change from negative to positive. And right here it changes from negative to positive and then it's not changing from negative to positive here. So I don't want to create a huge amount of value. So I'm going to count by twos and see if I can, there we go, find a place where it changes from negative to positive. And so now I'm going to find my break even points. Um, but first, let's graph it. So remember, we're going to grab column A, let go of everything, hit Control, grab Profit, 
let go, insert, scatter, and again you could hit layout one but for time's sake I'm not going to. Here's my profit function. My guess numbers, if you look here we know that one of the answers is 10. And then my second guess number, if you look here, it's between 32 and 34, so I'm going to put 33. You could also look at your graph. And I'm going to goal seek to zero by changing cell A26. And there are my two values. Now this time, my independent variable, this is a P column. And so the answer, I'm going to go ahead and type out the answer this time. Okay, so the first break-even point occurs here, and I do like both answers. Not only that, I do like both pieces of the answer, so that's another reason. That's the real reason why I went ahead and put the Q column in. So, uh, the break-even uh, values are $10.00 when 74 items are purchased and $32.50 when 29 items are purchased. So that's a great looking written out answer. Um, it's got both break even points and both the X coordinate and Y coordinate, both the price and the quantity are listed. So if I ask you for break-even points, that's really what I want. And I didn't write out that answer in problem one. I could do that uh, if I want to just go ahead and show you here. So this problem, problem one, the break-even uh, values are 1.67 items this time at $160 and 11.25 items at $45. So that's those are really good complete answers there.